Hi, my name is uh, Jeffrey Hullinger, and this is the public lecture review for Physics 2212. So details of the lecture. The lecture was given by Professor Sarah Seeger from MIT. In this lecture, she talked about exoplanets and how they were viewed through the James Webb Telescope. The lecture was loosely based on her documentary, The Hunt for Planet B, which won a Emmy actually last year. On the left, you can see kind of the poster for that documentary. So what is an exoplanet and why is it important? Exoplanet is any kind of planet which lies outside of the solar system. These planets are important as researchers think they could hold the key to life outside of Earth. One point in time, uh, the Earth was actually inhabited by a primitive life form of cyanobacteria. These cyanobacteria shape the planet's atmosphere through rapid oxygenation. Um, so could these exoplanets be undergoing the same transformations? That's essentially what Professor uh, Seeger is trying to figure out with her studies and her different ways of viewing these exoplanets and seeing, well, is there life on them? Uh, so these left two pictures are exoplanets. That's an exoplanet um, going around a different sun. Exoplanet is just anything that's not in our solar system that goes orbits a different sun than ours. And the blue picture is a really, really rough photo of an exoplanet. And then on the far right is a microscope of a cyanobacteria, a bunch of cyanobacteria. And yep. So how are exoplanets detected? They're detected through the James Webb Telescope. This telescope gives information about the surfaces of the planets, whether they are hospitable for life, such as water, oxygen, etc. With current technology, it's impossible to send even an unmanned object there. So what happens is the telescope technology is constantly improving and giving more accurate ideas of what exactly is out there. Um, on the right, you can see the James Webb um, telescope that is about to be sent into orbit right there. It's actually extremely light and the panels are made of different types of materials which help um, keep it from overheating. Um, and the top part of these pictures uh, show light curves which are used to detect the exoplanets. Uh, deviation from standard light frequencies from faraway suns denotes that there is an exoplanet that got in its way. So what makes this interesting? It's interesting how even though impossible to reach these planets physically, researchers have found other means to deduce information about them, such as through interpreting signature wavelengths. It's also interesting how researchers have to work with what they can get. Making analyses based off of very rudimentary data, like those kind of light graphs I was showing, they have to differentiate between like square um, parts of the graphs and V-shaped parts of the graph, which could mean different things, but don't look like much to someone who isn't familiar with all the procedures. Uh, what I learned, I learned how planets are identified by researchers when accurate visuals are difficult to produce, such as those light curves as I was talking about. I learned about the different types of evidence for life researchers look for on planets, such as bioorganic gases. I learned about the importance of the James Webb Telescope and what it means for this field of science. Uh, specifically, uh, what really interested me was learning that life on other planets could mean a lot of different things from remnants of tiny single-celled bacteria to more complex organisms, researchers aren't exactly sure just what to expect. Uh, how I followed up on the lecture, the speaker referenced that there was a specific velocity that the James Webb Telescope needed that would keep it in orbit. However, the speaker did not say why this was. This is because of centripetal motion, where the mass times velocity squared of the telescope divided by the radius of the orbit must be equal to the gravitational force exerted on it. This keeps the telescope from flying away. However, in real life, seen by that diagram on the left, James Webb Telescope is a little more complicated than this in its orbit as it follows multiple orbits of centripetal motion, such as uh, the moon revolves around the Earth, which revolves around the sun, but 
overall in total, the James Webb Telescope is orbiting around the sun.